25 launches China is planning for this year. So which number are we at now? Uh, well, I don't <laughs> exactly remember the number, but actually speaking, as you mentioned, it is a point that we, China has already become a big country in space field. We have so many launches, but as, me, uh, as uh, Presid uh, President Xi Jinping has mentioned that we hope to in the future become an uh, advanced country, so we still have a long way to go for this goal. Mm, well, let's go to Ms. Dr. Gorsh, uh, watching from NASA, given the fact that there, there was still taboo in terms of cooperation with China. What do you and other scientists there make of the latest development? So I think it's a huge um, achievement that China has come um, so very quickly developed uh, capability uh, within the last couple of decades. So I think that's really very um, um, positive. And as a individual scientist, I think any scientist globally would um, celebrate the um, accession of any country's capabilities. So I think from a scientific community, you will find a broad-based support. On a government level, obviously, bilateral relations complicate things, so that's different. Yes. But I think the rise of China for the couple of decades has been um, absolutely fabulous. Will that, uh, Dr. Gorsh, if I could just follow up a little bit from you briefly also, be able to encourage more American government's investment and also the private explorations into the space programs. Help you guys probably even in the future. So uh, if you can repeat the question. Um, the question is will China's successful investment? launch once again be able to gear up more enthusiasm from the American government and also the private sector to support NASA and also okay. the overall so space exploration? See, I think um, China's achievement is par perhaps peripheral. I think there is a very active um, um, program of private participation. Um, I, I think you, you're all watching the news of uh, Jeff Bezos' company, mm -hmm. Blue Origins, and Elon Musk's company making great strides in private exploration. So right now, the onus is not just in building capability, but building capability on the cheap. So what Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk are trying to do is try to reduce the cost of launch by as mm. much as 90%, cost of space travel. So right now it is no longer important, as important to build capability than to build capability cheaply. Well, I have so, to have so, so that, you know, you That's right, I take your point. Professor Young, you have to respond. Uh, what the Dr. Ghosh just said, not just the capability, by the way, it is also building the capabilities on the cheap. It is over having different kind of fact, uh, sectors involved, not only government, but also the private sector. So is China, in a way, in any competitive advantage about those? Uh, well, you see that the reusable uh, rocket will be a world trend for every country. So uh, China also do have some preliminary study, uh, prelim uh, preliminary study about this kind of technologies. But uh, on the other hand, I respect the uh, uh, the passion of the SpaceX, but I don't believe that Elon Musk can success in the uh, so-called the uh, colonization of Mars. So uh, he has uh, seriously underestimated the difficulty for uh, going to Mars. But is it the direction, if I could just ask you one more time, that it should be on the rise when it comes to cheap? Yes. And it also should be on the rise when it comes to different sectors' involvement? Well, uh, become cheaper is very critical and very important, I think. All right, let's go to Mr. Freitinger. Right. He has been uh, patiently waiting for your two colleagues to, to figure out what they stand for. What about from you, uh, Mr. Uh, Freitinger? Uh, do you think, uh, what do you make of the future trends? What exactly are the issues that we should work on now? Well, first of all, I think one has to really congratulate the entire Chinese community, space community and the Chinese people to this outstanding success, which is just one more step in a very thoroughly and properly planned um, um, sequence of um, making great progress in the exploration of outer space. Mm -hmm. um, what is specifically stunning, I think, is the schedule and the reliability of the schedule that the Chinese um, uh, space community has set uh, and built up for um, itself. Um, there are very, very concrete steps, very successful steps. What is up in the future? I think we have moved into a mode of cooperation, global cooperation, 
Um, and uh, we should at the same time not forget that a certain competition is also very fruitful and very important to reach really the big goals which are in front of humanity. Mm. Um, I think we all agree that there are big goals in front of us and uh, um, you can all put it together to the exploration of our solar system, human um, exploration of Mars, which I think uh, practically all space nations has put as their ultimate goal, mm. uh, if there is something like that. Uh, but of course all the different space nations are doing this at the moment by pursuing different avenues, mm. whether it's more commercial, more right. government steered, more um, um, different pathways, whether they lead through the exploration of asteroids well. or whether they go through a step on the moon. I think important is the ultimate goal and important is the readiness of all parties to uh, put their resources together and that, reach that, the that goals that, in the interest think, of humanity. I think, uh, Mr. Fischinger, that's exactly the question. Are parties ready to put their resources together? Uh, for example, we understand China and the United States, despite the two wonderful t scientists we have on our panel who are willing on their own at least uh, to work together but uh, when it comes to countries cooperation they're still with a challenge. Uh, Europe probably is a little bit better but still China's participation in the already existing European lead uh, project also limited at this moment. So uh, when are we going to be able to, as you said sir, put those resources together, which is quite needed, I think, it, because it's so costly for any country. I think this, everybody, uh, all the parties understand that there mm. needs to be a joint effort, that this cannot happen from today to tomorrow is also very clear, because people are having, or different countries are having different levels, different resources and different plans, which mm. need to be harmonized in order to focus on one clear goal. We from the International Astronautical Federation have one very big vision and that is connecting all space people. Mm -hmm. And we are doing that by bringing together the different countries at our big annual International Astronautical Congress which just took place a month ago in uh, Mexico where by the way we also had uh, this great talk of Elon Musk where he presented his uh, views and his right. plans for making mankind a multi-planetary species and I think what we all need is the inspiration that comes from um, announcements like that in order to bring our next generation, give our next generation the well, inspiration they need in order to put so space and space exploration uh, Dr. again in the Do focus of yes. their wishes. Uh, Dr. Gorsh, I think the ambition yes. is there, that their desire, the aspiration has always been there from the younger generation about exploration of the outer space. The question really is how can we go from here for the real practical step about cooperation? From the U.S. perspective, do you think, knowing all the information you have, where can we start at least if with China ever in the future? See, I think that's a very difficult question because, mm. uh, see, I think <laughs> goals <laughs> of nations are set right. not by, not just by the desire to cooperate or to desire to further the scientific frontier, but also th by their own strategic needs. Mm. So I think each nation, so it's not like that a community of scientists feel that um, cooperation is desirable, then desi that the no, each space, space agency internally has to assess what where it is headed and where it is not mm. so a very quick comment about the previous discussion about where what is the larger goal see the larger goal is one is of course cheap cheap space exploration the other goal is the um, humans to mars goal it's very difficult so it's very important to realize that mm. that next goal um, going to the moon was just three days away going right. to mars is seven days away uh, seven months away sorry and so imagine the amount of redundancy and planning for example uh, of Boeing 747, which when it flies from Washington to China, uh, has four engines just for redundancy. If one engine was to burn out, mm. how many engines should a spacecraft going from Earth to Mars have? Right. So, what what happens if there is an astronaut encounter a medical emergency? All this makes the present cost of going to um, sending humans to Mars at maybe 500 billion to 1 trillion dollars. So that makes it really unaffordable for any country unless you learn to do this cheap unless there are breakthroughs in engineering and unless there is international cooperation. 
Dr. Gosh, coming from the Mars Rover's exploration team, knows exactly what he's talking about when he explained to us all of the complexities. Having said that, though, uh, Professor Young, I wonder whether we could start from somewhere. And I'm going to shine some light about that. That is the International Space Station. At this moment, the launch of the Shenzhou 11 is, in Chinese view, in preparation for the construction of China's own space station. And China is not just going to use it alone. China has been showing its willingness to enhance space cooperation, especially once the station starts working for the year 2022. Will China be able to stick to that? China signed an agreement in June with the United Nations to open its space station to member states, especially developing countries. China will provide flight opportunities for astronauts and payloads. Uh, engineers who can conduct space experiments on board the station. Both parties will also promote international cooperation in human space flight and other space activities. A lot of excitement over there, but uh, Professor Yang, here's the issue. It is still a few years to go. It depends on China's every step of the way success in the next few years. And then it also depends on whether the U.S. and European countries and developing and emerging economies want to work with China, seeing China as a reliable partner in that regard. What do you make of it? Uh, well, you see, uh, b uh, before this, we have already have very close relationship with the uh, ESA and also with Russia. Mm -hmm. So we already have many cooperation ESA, either in a manned Europe. space flight or mm -hmm. manned space flight. So we are uh, we can trust each other as partners. But in the future, as you mentioned, the policy of the U.S. is a problem. As Mr. Uh, Dr. Fishting have mentioned, the IF community still plays a very leading role in this field. In every Congress, in every International mm. Astronautical Congress, we have made chances for different countries to uh, di discuss together and uh, discuss about the possibility for our cooperation and also raise many proposals for our future cooperation. So that is the starting point for us for the future potential cooperation. The scientist community to speak out at yes. this moment, but Mr. Fishtinger, uh, at this moment, we all understand the United States still rely on Russia at this moment to transfer the astronauts to the International Space Station. So do many other European countries. When it expires, the current ISS, International Space Station, what to do? Will China be an option? If that is an option, what would that mean for opening a possibility, at least, for everyone to work together? Well, I think um, coming back also to your initial question, when and how mm. uh, China will become a space power, I would just like to contradict a bit. China is a, a space power, as you rightfully said. I didn't ask today, when is China, China going China to be a Russia. space power, but rather my question is when the space cooperation among countries are going to be possible. So, sir, is space international space station going to be a possibility and starting point? Sure, sure. I think the timing is exactly right because 2024, the space station should come to an end, the International Space Station, while uh, China is just uh, uh, about to build up their own space mm. station. So it would be not really natural to ignore so this fact. Uh, and certainly when we talk about cooperation, that is the most natural and the most logical thing to do to go together. Okay, Dr. Gosh, I know you want to have something so, so to say. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> right, so I, I, I would make I, I would make a little um, diversion here. So, so it depends. Fifteen years from now or ten years from now, what is the what is the pressing space problem? Is it going to Mars? Is there a critical mass at that point to go to Mars um, to send humans to Mars? Then countries and private entities might want to um, allocate resources on that and not go to a space station. On the other hand, I think the Chinese space station, if it, if it comes online 20, 20, 25 range, there are a lot of aspiring space powers like Nigeria, like United Arab Emirates, like Singapore, like Saudi Arabia. They want, might want time. They might, might want experiments. So there is no doubt that the um, um, Chinese space station will be a success. It's just that depends on what the pressing problem of the day in space right. exploration is. Uh, will det determine which countries, subset of countries, are part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Young, help me to understand this. As an outsider, it's very hard for me to understand why the focus of research have always been switching all the time, because that's going to be a lot of waste of time, money, and resources, whether it is on Mars or on the moon, on the manned program, a space station. So 
can you help me to understand from now until the year 2024 or 2025 when China is trying to send men onto the moon? How do you, from the Chinese perspective, understand the strategic goals? You know, it is meaningless if you repeat the scientific research work of other countries in space field. So uh, every uh, uh, space mission, every scientific research mission must be uh, different, we must be instinctive, different from other countries. Mm. So uh, it is very natural to have different uh, choices of different uh, scientific research experiments. So we do not repeat other countries' work. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, each country should work together, especially in the scientific research field. That is the most easy field for different countries to work together. Also, during the Astronautical Congress uh, this year and last year, All the right. China Manned Space Agency has uh, uh, given lectures, given presentations to show the proposals and the wishes to cooperate with other countries, including the U.S. Okay, and from now until two days later, Mr. Fischlinger, we are going to see the Chinese astronauts helping the current Shenzhou 11 to dock with the lab. That is going to be a very important step. Help us to understand very briefly, if you can, with 30 seconds, the significance of that. And what kind of signal does it send to you when it comes to China's capabilities and China's capabilities of cooperating also with the others? Mr. Fischlinger. Well, the the basis of good cooperation is also uh, is always uh, a very good um, basis of own knowledge and expertise. And by uh, doing this kind of um, mission uh, where in space rendezvous uh, and docking of two spacecrafts is actually one of the key technologies, right. China is demonstrating that it is able to bring to the worldwide community um, the knowledge and the expertise I in see. this critical technology. And so I think we should really wish the two Taikonauts all the best for this uh, very tough operation which is ahead of them. Absolutely. Uh, 10 seconds for you, Dr. Ghosh, so and 10 seconds for you as well, Dr. So Professor Young. Dr. Ghosh. So, so think of 1969. People would not have believed that the day would come when country, a country like China right. uh, would match the capability of the U.S. So this is huge, I think. Um, the fact that China has gone forward and countries, other countries like India have gone forward. Professor Yang, final words, well, 10 seconds. Uh, our, our docking mechanism is, is uh, APAS, which is very similar. And in the future, it is very easy for us to have, right. a, uh, have a cooperation together. It is, uh, technically speaking, it is possible to uh, dock with other countries' spacecraft.